Welcome back to Stories of Unsettling Lore, presented by the Collingwood Museum. In this series, we're sharing four short stories written by museum staff and volunteers that are based on Collingwood lore. Parts of these stories may be historically accurate and some parts may be total fiction. How much of this tale do you dare to believe? That's up to you to decide. Now settle in and join us for our fourth and final story of Unsettling Lore. Do you know that old buildings can talk? The squeaks, the creaks, the rattles and sighs, they tell a story if you listen closely enough. I'm going to tell you a tale of the Collingwood Terminals. Perhaps you've heard this story whispering in the wind late at night as you walk along Heritage Drive. 93 years ago, On September 1st, 1928, the first wooden piling for the town's new grain elevator was driven into the bedrock of Georgian Bay. A company from Montreal had been hired to build the foundation at the end of the narrow spit in Collingwood's Harbor. The Montreal company hired 40 local men to drive in over 4,000 wooden pilings that formed the elevator's base. The men worked grueling hours, placing the heavy wooden pillars in the frigid water through a long, cold winter. By spring 1929, the foundation was finally in place and the construction of the 52 grain silos began. The construction materials were driven by train to the end of the track and then workers mixed the concrete by hand on site. The men labored day and night continuously pouring the concrete to erect the 100 foot high silos. There were reports that late at night you could hear the groans of the men as they worked back breaking hour after hour slogging concrete. The silos were built in only four months. An amazing engineering feat. The Collingwood Terminals from base to top was constructed in one year. And in September 1929, the first ship arrived in the harbor to unload grain at the newly completed building. For the next 64 years, the terminals were a busy place with ships, trains, wagons and trucks loading and receiving grain. Of course, there were always rumors. It was said that the ships carrying grain were often infested with rodents and it was common for a rat or two to fall into the bins during the transfer of grains from ship to storage. The squeal of rats was a common sound inside the building, so they said. In October 1993, 28 years ago this month, the terminals closed forever. The building was boarded up and left to sit empty. Or was it empty? Once again, rumors started swirling about the old building at night. People walking by the terminals reported hearing loud squeaking, chattering, and scratching noises coming from inside the building. Some residents even said they glimpsed shiny eyes and shadows the size of a dog scurrying past windows. You see, rats had been sealed into the building when it closed, never to escape. But don't worry, there was still grain left in the 52 silos, so the rats had plenty to eat over the years. Of course, with no natural predators, 
and plenty of food. The rats grew larger and larger. Of course, this was all just rumors, whispers. It couldn't possibly be true, could it? Today, the Collingwood Terminals still is closed and locked. But is it empty? You tell me. What stories do you hear whispering on the wind that comes off the bay at night? That was What Lives Within, written and told by Lindsay Cook. For the last 92 years, the large concrete terminals have stood as an iconic landmark in Collingwood. It's only natural that this structure has worked its way into local lore. Though rumors have flown around for years, museum staff can confirm that there are in fact no monstrously giant rats living in the terminals. If you've missed our previous three stories, they can still be found on the Collingwood Museum Facebook page. Thank you for watching Stories of Unsettling Lore. And stay spooky, Collingwood.